decided you want to start kayak fishing in Hawaii. This video is going to be for the noobs, the guys who have never kayak fished before. Maybe you've paddled a kayak around a little bit for fun, or maybe you've got some shore fishing experience or something. This video is going to be for people who have never kayak fished before. And in my experience, you're going to want to learn how to paddle the kayak first before you throw fishing into it. That's going to add a whole nother element into the equation. So just start with paddling your kayak first. So of course, the first thing you're going to need to get is a paddle. You can get one of these paddles. It's a cheap $20, $25 paddle from Walmart or something. It's got aluminum shaft, little ball in it. The ball pops into the hole. Basically, these are the super beginner paddles, but I mean, you get what you pay for. These things will bend if you're paddling super hard. They're real heavy and they can break. I broke one before. I was two miles offshore and my paddle snapped in half. I had two, two pieces of paddle in my hand, but luckily, I was carrying a spare paddle so I got my spare paddle out and put it together and I paddled back to shore so always bring two paddles if you can the next level up is one of these it's a it's got a carbon shaft it's way lighter this one is a, a Werner paddle this is the lower end model this one's about $135 $140 but you can go all the way up to $500 on these things. They're way lighter. They're a lot stronger. You're not going to bend this. And these are made for really paddling a kayak. So if you can afford it, get a more expensive paddle and maybe keep the cheapo paddle as your spare. The next thing that is 100% mandatory is your safety gear. You have to get a PFD. This is just a cheap Walmart cheapo PFD life jacket, but it works. I strapped a, a dive knife on here and I have a pliers with a whistle on it. So I think in Hawaii, the, the only mandatory things you need on a kayak is a PFD and a whistle. So you don't need a life jacket. You could also get a boat seat that is a flotation device, but what good is that going to do if you flip over and hit your head and you're knocked unconscious and floating face down in the water? If you have your PFD on and that happens, it'll float you onto your back so your face is out of the water and you can breathe. So get a, get a life jacket, get a PFD, and wear it. I see a lot of guys fishing and they have their life jackets stuffed inside their hatch and they're not wearing it, so... It's not going to do you any good when you get into trouble and you're not going to have enough time to pull it out and put it on before you flip your kayak and get in trouble. So wear your life jacket. And the third thing that, in my opinion, you definitely want to have. And for me, if I forget this, then I don't go out. I go back home and get it. That's a bilge pump. In my opinion, you have to have a bilge pump. If somehow you kayak gets punctured, dragging it down the beach, and you didn't see a sharp piece of metal that punctured your kayak, or you rubbed the reef or something, you got a little puncture in it. Whatever the reason is, if something happens out there and, and your kayak starts taking on water, if you have one of these, you have a chance. Some people say you can get in the hatch and start bailing it with a bucket or you know, cut off water bottle or something. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff in your hatch, or if you have a little small hatch like this big, you're not gonna be able to do that. This thing has little notches on it, so you could stick it all the way up to the bottom of the kayak and it's still gonna have little holes to suck water in. And practice using it. Fill your kayak up with water with the hose and start pumping it. Watch how fast this thing will empty the water out. In my opinion, this is mandatory. And another thing that you want to have is a dry box. 
I use one of these things, you're gonna to wanna to put your phone in a dry box. You can put your phone and your keys and your wallet and everything in here, but always carry your phone fully charged in a dry box. That's gonna be your main way of contacting help. If something happens, you cut your hand and you can't paddle, or you got a fish hook stuck in your hand and you can't paddle anything, then you can pull your phone out and call 911. They can track the GPS on your phone. They can tell the Coast Guard, they can find you. You can also use a dry bag. You can get one of these things. Dry bag, I don't know. I don't really like these. A little harder to get into and you gotta feel around for stuff in here, but you can use one of these too. This one's got a little clip on it, so you clip it onto your kayak. You could also get a bigger dry box like this. It's got a whole big dry stash area. It's got a rubber gasket on it. I actually use this to hold my tackle, so I keep all my, my tackle dry. It's got a little spot up here that is not dry that you could put your wet salty lures or something up in there. But there's lots of options for dry boxes. And there's some other safety gear that I carry that is not mandatory, but I just carry it for peace of mind. It's kind of like insurance or like carrying a survival kit in your backpack when you're in the mountains. So I carry an emergency blanket, you know, just for reflection or, you know, say you something happens and you end up on a deserted beach in the middle of the night, you got a safety blanket. I carry a signal mirror just in case something happens with my phone and I gotta signal another boat or something. I carry a heavy duty trash bag. This is a, a Husky contractor trash bag. This could be used as another flotation device. You could fill this thing up with air, tie it up and hold on to it and float if something happens. I have a roll of Gorilla Tape. And this could be used to patch a hole in your kayak if you needed to. I have a red rain poncho and this could be used for signaling or you know if you get caught in a storm or something and you get cold you can put on your rain poncho. I carry some extra paracord and some rope. This is like floating marine rope. I have a glow stick here, an unopened glow stick. And I just have a little roll of wire just in case I need to try and fix stuff. And I have some fishing gloves. You're going to want to wear gloves if you're grabbing some fish, but that's not necessary if you're just getting used to paddling. And you can get one of these things to sit on. It's like a stadium seat. It'll raise you up out of the water a little bit, get your foot out of the water. And you might want to get a sponge too. This is more for like when you get back on the beach, you can clean the rest of the water out of the hatch of your kayak and rinse it out. It's less than you can pump out with the pump. You know, kayaks get water in them sometimes, just a little bit, just from, you know, waves and spray splashing on them. And you can use this to clean yourself up too if you got fish slime on you or, you know, you want to dip it in the water and wring it off on yourself and clean off your legs or something. And you're going to need some straps to keep your kayak on your car or your truck. Let's get some basic ratchet straps. I made this little tote here, drilled some holes in it, ran a rope through it, tied a knot right there, and I put a piece of PVC pipe on this side so I have a little handle so I can drag this thing down the beach, take it to my kayak, unload all the gear off of it, drag it back to my truck, and then I can pull the kayak back to my truck with nothing in it, totally empty. So that's basically the stuff you need just to get started paddling. I mean, it's kind of a, it's a basic setup, but I think that when you first start off, you should get used to just putting all that gear on your kayak and paddling around, taking the gear off of your kayak, just get used to taking the the kayak off your truck or your car, get used to dragging it down the beach, get used to setting it up, get used to paddling, get the stuff situated on your kayak the way you like it before you throw fishing into the equation. Just practice doing that 
and after you get used to kayaking, after you get used to paddling, and maybe go offshore a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and just take some paddles, just, you know, survey the areas you want to start fishing. Maybe do that three or four times before you actually bring a fishing pole out there. Once you bring the fishing pole out there, then you're going to throw a whole nother element into the equation and it's going to complicate things quite a bit. So hope you learned a little bit from this video. I'll uh, show you what it looks like on the kayak now. This is a Malibu 2 kayak. This is one of the most common kayaks that you find around in Hawaii. This is what all the rentals will give you. And you can find these on Craigslist. Probably get one for couple hundred dollars pretty basic kayak yeah it's not a fishing kayak but trust me you can catch some fish on one of these I caught a lot of fish on this I fished on this kayak for years but so you want to get started paddling you're gonna want to just figure out how you want things situated so you can have your spare paddle you can just stick that up there on the front hopefully you got some of these straps on it if not might have to put some straps on but just cinch that down so it doesn't move around and then throw your pump on there you're most likely gonna have one of these hatches on your kayak this one has two but you flip this open and stick your pump inside here and pump the water out now you're just gonna store this thing up here in the front. Keep it in access so you can reach up and grab it. Keep those right there. And then you got your life jacket. It's gonna go on your body. You can use your stadium seat or you can also get a boat uh, boat seat cushion that's actually extra flotation but I just use this you can just throw it right on top of your seat like that just stick it in there so you can raise it up a little bit off the bottom you got your main paddle you got your dry box with your phone in it you can just clip that onto one of the one of the eyes up here that way it's in access, you can reach up there and grab it. Your feet are going to be going right about here, so you want this stuff up there in front of you so you can reach forward and get it. Or you can use one of these things, your dry bag. Be careful with these though because these small little plastic clips are kind of hard to get off. Put them on the hook eye, so you might want to get a carabiner or one of these test hooks or something like that. To I recommend a plastic dry box though. Here's my paddle leash I first started using. I made this out of just a boogie board leash and I put a little string on the swivel here, attach one of these little brass hooks to it. It's a little swivel clip so it actually has a double swivel here and then on this side I just tied another string and looped it through the, the the wrist velcro, this is what goes on your wrist, and I cut it down a little bit so there wasn't a big long piece sticking off. And basically what you do is you just take the velcro, strap it on there, I'm going to leave it a little loose so it can slide around when your paddle's swiveling. And you just take the clip, hook it on one of these little hook eyes right here. Find one that's in range. Put it on there and now your paddle is attached to your kayak. So if you flip, it's still attached. If you drop it overboard when you're doing something, your paddle will float away and then stop. So just practice putting all your gear on getting it set up the way you like it and practice paddling around practice dragging your kayak around with all your stuff on it you're going to want to make sure that your handles are real solid I replaced this handle rope with some 550 paracord 
just to make it a little stronger. I think this stuff was getting frayed that was on there. But you can drag these kayaks down the beach. You don't need the wheels. You can drag this thing. This kayak's been dragged down the road. This kayak's been used and abused for years. It was under someone's house for like five years before I got a hold of it. And it's been kicking around my house for six years. So, but it's still seaworthy. This thing's ready to go. This thing could be paddled for miles. These Malibu 2 kayaks are real stable too. So, I don't know if you're gonna first get started paddling. Maybe just grab one of these for a couple hundred bucks and see if you like it before you spend $1,200 on a fishing kayak. So, set it up like this. Paddle around. Get used to using this stuff. Get used to reaching forward and pulling these paddles out. Get used to flipping open your, your dry box here and grabbing stuff out of there. Just get used to moving this thing around in the water. And then you can start fishing. So, I'll make another video about beginner fishing gear and things you want to get started fishing with and what kind of tackle to start with I mean, if you're already experienced fisherman you don't need to watch that you already know what you're doing but my experience I had to start from scratch so I know there's other people that are gonna be starting from scratch so check out my next video and thanks for watching see ya